Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to What the What? Being someone who does understand how an internal combustion engine works, pistons, cranks, explosive fuel, uh, flywheels, gearboxes, clutches, I got all that. I learned all that when I was quite young. Electricity, it's really weird. So we really wanted to kind of have a look at how electricity works, what electricity is, and thankfully we've got someone who is extraordinarily clever and well informed about these things and has come up with some brilliant ideas to explain it. Please welcome Dr. Helen Chesky. Well, thank you. Now. And I should say, it is so nice. I spend my time as a physicist. You know, if I go to parties and people say, what do you do? I say, I'm a physicist. They go, oh, and they go and get a drink. Uh, they don't want to talk to me. And so see, <laughs> enthusiasm for physics, this is what we want, right? It makes things work. So the first thing we're going to talk about, I think, is kilowatt hours and kilowatts. That's the thing, because everyone who's got an electric car is aware of uh, how many kilowatt hours their battery stores. But what we need to know is, what the hell is a kilowatt hour and what's a kilowatt? Yeah, and we'll go through some of the words. One of the other things Acronyms. I've been doing is walking around all these stalls saying to people, what, what, is it that, what, what are the words that people don't understand? And so we've yeah. got some of those along the way. We're going to be explaining this in jargon. Okay, so a watt <laughs> is um, a unit of power, which means it's how much energy is going somewhere. And energy is this really difficult Sort of, we know, we know it's important, we know it's here, we know we need it, but it's hard to know what a unit of energy is. So I'm going to show you uh, with an apple, because that's my kind of physics. So here, the apple sitting down on the chair here, I'm going to lift it up by about a meter. The amount of energy it took me to do that, that is pretty much exactly one joule, uh, which is how you remember these things. And that means if I lift up the apple once per second, <laughs> I am, I am using power at one joule, one unit of energy per second, and that is what a watt is. It's a way of calculating the flow of energy through a system. Kilowatts are a useful unit of energy because you can, a thousand times that is the sort of thing you can do something useful with. Right. So in the real world, a kettle uses three kilowatts of power. So whenever it's switched on, um, energy is flowing through the electrical circuits at three kilowatts. And that's quite a, that's a, that's a, hold on to the kettle, right, as a mental concept. Kettles are actually quite energy expensive. Um, whenever you switch one on in your house, your power consumption, there'll be a noticeable up, spike. Yeah. You've got sort of smart meters yeah. and things, haven't you? So you can see that. So a Tesla Model S, um, average power consumption-ish, if you take the power it uses overdriving, you know, for a long time and doing lots of other things, a bit of heater, a bit of uh, putting the radio on, whatever. The average is about 18 kilowatts, 10 to 18. Right. So three to six kettles is a Tesla Model and S. that's not accelerating, that's just continuing. That's, uh, that's at, what, stopping at and starting. So, so obviously over a whole journey. It's over about, a whole journey. Right. So when you're, when you're doing your super efficient driving and you're watching the numbers, you're using less energy than a kettle. Right. But if you start really, you know, push, stopping and starting, yeah. then you're using more than a kettle. So, so when people had rides in Teslas with ludicrous mode here, which some people have, had, yeah. <laughs> that was quite a lot of kettles quite that were being kettles. boiled at that moment. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to mention something else here, which, because we're at a car event, people still talk about horsepower, yeah. which is lovely. You know, I like that mental image, but, a, you know, a horsepower is energy that is being used and kilowatts are the rate of energy being used. So there is an equivalence. So one, kilo, one kilowatt is 1.3 horsepowers. So a big horse and a little one, that's a kilowatt. Right. So if you wow. have one horsepower, you can, it's, it's a little bit more than, a, than a, um, a kilowatt. So the interesting thing is that a three kilowatt kettle is running at two and a half horsepower. Right. Had you, should you, did you ever want to do that experiment? But actually, that, that experiment, heating up water using horses, that was how the concept of heat and mechanical energy being equivalent was discovered. Wow. There was a scientist who got a load of horses and got them to turn a great big capstan. Um, and the energy that was made as metal moved around heated up water. Wow. And that was how the jewel was measured for the first time. Wow. 
it was actually measured with horses. So I like the fact that there's yeah. two and a half horsepower in a kettle. Right. Because that is right in there. At, you know, the fundamentals of how energy was um, Yeah. So know, then if you've, got a, if you've got a 500 horsepower electric motor, which is right. in the Tesla range, yeah. that's a lot of it's horses. a lot of horses. It's a lot of horses. And the thing is, that's the, that's the maximum power. Yeah. So it's not the average, but it's what it can generate. Yeah. Um, and then the numbers just get bigger. So you go up into megawatts, a Eurostar train, 12 megawatts. Is it really? Is that yeah. what that uses? I mean, wow. they're, big, they're 400 they're meters big. long, yeah, yeah. but it's a lot of... And then you get into gigawatts, so power station, a few gigawatts. Yeah. And then the UK average energy consumption is 34 gigawatts. So that's right. so we're getting up. Um, and oh, and the last thing on my list, just because these numbers keep getting bigger, is a petawatt, which is one with 15 zeros. And if you have 200 of them, that is the entire amount of energy the Earth gets from the sun. That's the rate at which Wow. Power is arriving from the sun, is petawatts. There's a huge amount of energy around. And the one step on from there is kilowatt hours. So a kilowatt is how fast energy is flowing. A kilowatt hour is how much flows over a unit of time, over an hour. So that's an amount of energy, right? So, that's, so you imagine you're pouring water from a jug down a pipe. The water can go, keeps going down the pipe at a certain rate. But if you let it pour for an hour, you fill up yeah. the container at the bottom, and that's how much energy you've got. The question then is, so you've got a battery, which is maybe 100 kilowatt hours. That's how much you need to fill it up. How long does it take to fill it up? That's, that depends on your charging rate. And I walked around this morning, and I asked lots of people what it, what it means to have a rapid charger or a fast charger, and I got a lot of different answers. So if you're confused about this, it's OK. Because even the people who know this are a little bit confused about this. A slow charge, which is what you might get in your house, that's about a kettle, somewhere around three kilowatts. So one kettle is a slow charge. A fast charge is a bit more than twice that. Um, so that's a sort of seven kilowatt fast charge. Rapid charge, 50 kilowatts. So there's a big jump up. That means you, know, you can charge much more quickly because you're pushing energy in much more quickly. And then there's these things called ultrachargers, which apparently someone told me in Germany they're making 350 Three, kilowatts. Yeah. 350 and, you know, kilowatts. as a physicist, right, thinking about energy, that's a huge amount of energy. Like the, the, I mean, it's sort of a, it's like burning something. It's a, it's a huge yeah. release of energy. Well, we, we heard earlier on today, it's, this, it's what a, a very large superstore uses. Yes. So a, la a very yeah. large supermarket with thousands of freezers yeah. is on about 350 kilowatts. So it's a it's lot. It's a lot of yeah. power. Yeah. Um, but if you've got a charger that can do that, you can fill up your, your jug, if you like, in your car very quickly. Yeah. So other things I discovered on my walk around, I discovered acronyms. Well, I talked, in talking to five people, I came up with a list of 17 acronyms, DND, MPAN, PV, IC, HPC, CCS, OCPP, this is just cheating at Scrabble, NDEC, WLT, like what? <laughs> oh, acronyms no, are very, terrible. Yeah. Acronyms are where people stop thinking, yes, right? Yes. They just use a word and everyone yeah. stops thinking. So if you hear someone use an acronym, you're not stupid for asking them what it means. Because the only yeah. one I know, the only one I've learned recently out of all those is Worldwide Light Vehicle Transport Protocol, which is right. WLTP, <laughs> Yes. which is the new NEDC. The WLTP the, is the yeah. new version of the NEDC. It's one of the most boring sentences ever <laughs> spoken. <laughs> I bet there's some people want to ask some questions, I'm hoping. Does anybody have a question for Helen? Hi, um, what will be the, oh, bit of feedback, the theoretical limit on charging? The theoretical limit on charging? Oh, no, sorry, practical. Practical limit. Oh, yeah. So here's the deal, right? If you move a lot of energy extremely quickly, things get very hot and you've got to control a lot of energy very quickly. There's a guy over there in the corner who's got a charger, somewhere over there, I spoke to him this morning, who is standing next to a charger that he claims is 500 amps. Now, if you're dealing, that's the amount of current, that's like the width of your pipe when it comes so to energy coming down pipe. the pipe. Yeah. 500 amps, like I stopped breathing <laughs> when he said 500 amps. So that in practice, the, the limits on charging are to do with the materials because uh, safety and materials, because you, you have to not heat, if you, 
like, you know when you short something in the explosion, right? That is a load of amps going through a system. So there's no theoretical limit in terms of can you do it? There's a practical limit in terms of the materials you need to use to do it. And I can't see, I, th I think to, to shunt that amount of energy without generating so, because you're wasting energy, right? Every, if you do it at a higher current, the faster you move energy, the more heat you waste along the way, right. and the more dangerous it yeah. is. So in practice, I don't think um, that it's going to get that much higher than you know the yeah. sort of 300 it's, kilowatt. It's also interesting that, that the, the fact that you're pushing that much more generates heat, gives you the, you know, it tells you. That, right. uh, and it, it also underlines the fact of how inefficient an internal combustion yes. engine is, because what yep. does an internal combustion do? It gets it's hot. hot. What does that heat mean? It means wasted energy, because yep. you're not using that energy to move you along. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. How long before we can start to see superconducting materials used for charging faster? So superconducting materials um, are interesting because they don't... They, there's no resistance. Yeah. No resistance to flow. And it's the resistance that generates the heat. So if you can have a system which doesn't has zero resistance, you don't waste all that energy. Now, the problem is superconductors were discovered at very low temperatures, kind of 10 Kelvin, so minus 260-ish degrees Celsius, very, very, very cold. A high temperature superconductor works at about minus 70 Kelvin. Wow. So the thing is, you can have a superconductor, it's not hard, but you need all to put all the energy in to cool it down. Uh, to get it to work. And so the, the holy grail of electronics basically is room temperature superconductors because then all this resistance would stop being a problem. Your phone wouldn't go flat on a hot day because the resistance goes up. It would solve a lot of problems, but no one has discovered a material which makes superconductivity possible at room temperature. But basically heat is the enemy of efficiency. The only thing you can do 100% efficiently is generate heat. Right. Because everything else will generate some heat as a side effect. But the more you can keep energy flowing in your little closed loop, which is what those systems yeah. allow, the better you, yes. you know, you just using the energy going round and round and round. Yeah. Quick, one quick question. Um, it's just sort of building on the question earlier about the theoretical limits of charging rate. Um, I charged up at Oxford earlier. There were 10 superchargers, 120 kilowatts each. That's 1.2 megawatts. Um, can you just touch on the solutions that we have at the moment for buffering energy with battery backup? Because I think that's really interesting. And there are, there are, def um, there is a company, look out, look, uh, go and find Tonic Energy. They're here because they're, that's exactly what they're doing. They're building uh, battery buffers for multiple high, uh, ultra rapid chargers. They're, they're, and the other one, if you've got a Tesla, use the Tesla supercharger at South Mims on the M25. I made a special trip because that's the sort of idiot <laughs> I am. But that has batteries behind it and it is the fastest charge I've ever had from a, a a supercharger because it's not coming from the mains, it's coming from the battery. I mean, it's coming from the mains, but via the battery. So, yeah, that's definitely uh, something yeah. that we're going to see more and more but of. You need big of batteries but you need very you big need, batteries. They need to recharge, and they're recharging slowly. Yes. So you can dump a lot of charge quickly, yeah. but you can only fill them up But again they're actually talking slowly. about foot, half football pitch-sized mega, wow. me, uh, megawatt-hour batteries. I mean, that's what they're... They're starting to install. Well, you know what I quite like about that? So, you know, there's a lot of technologies. The Victorians just made bigger. They weren't yeah. ashamed to just take something simple and make, make it, it gigantic. Huge. Yes. Uh, and it's that sort of thing. And I often feel sad that quite a lot of technology is getting so small, people don't appreciate it yeah. anymore. But, you know, you go to a supercomputer now and it's the size of a, like, I don't know, a horse or something. Yeah, it used to be a whole building. It used to be enormous. Yeah. And then people yeah. go, oh, is that it? So yeah. maybe there's going to be a while people will appreciate batteries. <laughs> Because they'll be they gigantic. So much room. And then maybe they'll get smaller again. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Batteries are good because they release slowly. They charge yeah. slowly and they release slowly. It's chemical energy. But if you release chemical energy quickly, you've got an explosion. So you've got this yeah. very fine line between useful energy release and very bad idea. Yeah, because that was one of the best things I've ever seen in a laboratory. I'm not going to say where it was, but it was this. We made a battery that has 20 times the energy density of current lithium ion. And I went, oh, brilliant. Where is it? And then he pointed to a burn mark on the bench. <laughs> and that's where it was. And it had exploded. But, you know, luckily it was very small. So they, <laughs> no one was hurt. <laughs> But yeah, that, 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 that's when you're pushing the limits of those things. Yeah. The heat. And got we get too that much. now, you know, with lithium ion batteries, if, you, if they go wrong, there's yeah, a lot they, of energy. It's not good. You've no. got a store of energy that is going to cause problems. Yeah. So, yeah.
I just want to thank Helen for explaining all that to us. That was a brilliant uh, talk. Thank you so much, Helen. We really hope that we'll shoot a fully charged with you very, very soon. Thank you for coming along today. Please give Helen a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.